So it's the B duck warrant that he's on. I saw a movie like that once. It was Alien, I think. That's fine. Uh, good evening. We're going to start our meeting Monday, February 23rd, Board of Selectmen meeting. Uh, if we can all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. wanted to uh, let everyone know that Betty is uh, a little bit under the weather and uh, will not be attending the meeting. So we're going to call to order the meeting and uh, open it up uh, to public comment if anybody has any uh, public comment to, to add tonight. Now is your time. We have some people here. All right, I'm going to close public comment, move on. We're going to go to the warrant, and I uh, just wanted to uh, establish with you, Bill, that we have to invoke the rule of necessity uh, with the deduct warrant because that is an account that. Uh, Beside the bill's warrants. I'm sorry? It's the bill warrant. I'm sorry, the bill's warrants, number 15 35, because that is an account that um, uh, your company has paid for snow removal. So, with only two of us, we still have to vote the warrants. So, I'll go through them, starting with payroll warrant number 15 35. For a total of $157,182.03. Do I have a second? Seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. The next one is so the. Can I interrupt you for one minute? I'm Go sorry. Ahead. The bill warrant should be the $1,145,000. Those two numbers are reversed. The, oh, okay. So. Glad you mentioned that. I'll make a note of that when I do the minutes. Thank you. The uh, second one is the deduct warrant, number 15-33A, which is $25,752.05. Do I have a second? Seconded. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Unanimous, no discussion. And the last one is the bill warrant. Again, we're invoking the rule of necessity, so Bill, you can, you can vote on it and make the, uh, any comments. The bill warrant, number 15-35. For a total of one million one hundred and forty-five thousand two hundred and thirty-three and twenty-four cent twenty-four cents. Do I have a second? Seconded. Second by Bill. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. We're going to move on to the appointments. It's uh, a few minutes uh, ahead of schedule. I think we're good. We do have a public hearing at six twenty, so I'll keep that in mind. We'll initiate the first appointment, but at 620 sharp, because it's a public hearing, we have to break if we have to to go into that, okay? And I, and I don't want to restrict your time. So so we'll get started, and then we can continue. So I'm going to read this out to you. The uh, We have an appointment um, request. Appointment of Amy Kramer of Stoddard, New Hampshire, as Library Director, effective March 16, 2015, the appointment will be contingent upon a Corey check with a starting salary of $61,000 per year through June 30th, 2016, beginning with her start date through June 30th, 2015. A minimum of 20 hours in the library is required and will be paid at a prorated salary. Beginning July 1, 2015, a full-time schedule of 37 plus uh, per week is, is, is uh, must be per, uh, 37 plus hours per week is required. Yes. yes. <laughs> Please uh, tell us about this. 
Um, so, um, if you can identify yourself. I'm uh, Elizabeth Burton, um, Board of Library Trustees Chair. And um, so Amy Kramer was the candidate that was selected by the uh, search committee and forwarded to the full board of trustees and um, the board of full board of trustees and the public and the staff um, interviewed uh, Amy further and was our candidate that we uh, selected uh, as a group. And um, we we're very excited to have her start. Um, she will be re relocating down uh, out of New Hampshire. And um, that's one of the reasons why we were giving her the flexibility of the 20 hours in the beginning, so she can um, accommodate that. But she doesn't think uh, she will need until July. She'll mm -hmm. go full time as fast as she can. Okay. So we're very excited to have her coming. And Wonderful. I would just like to say to the board that um, <coughs> normally we do invite appointments to attend, but be given her location. Um, so I did inform her that when she does start, she would be invited to come before the board just so you can meet her. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. That 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 is an important courtesy. Yeah, it is. It, yeah, it is. Um, but in the winter, started New Hampshire is like China. <laughs> exactly. And she's actually in Oregon this week oh, for okay. school vacation for them. So oh, great. She's officially out of town. <laughs> yeah, and we're not into Skyping yet. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Well, but we did Skype on our selection committee, um, not uh, not for Amy, no. but uh, for other candidates. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So Very it's great. Um, so yeah, she will come and uh, in be introduced when she comes. Terrific. Well, I want to thank you and the uh, trustees for your it's hard been a great work. Great process. Did you have a search committee? Did you say? Yep, we had okay. a search committee of five, uh, including uh, three trustees and Denise and a member of the community, and um, Ron Mer um, Merton. Merton's. Set, so he's been uh, uh, the chair of the Friends. He's an active library user. Um, so he was a great uh, ad addition to the selection committee. Terrific. Thank you for that. Um, You're welcome. The next appointment also related to the library. Yeah. The appointment. You vote on. No. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I get a. So Amy. You have a question? I'm sorry. <laughs> That's right. I, we can't vote together no. for them. This is. So uh, I was just looking over her resume and I have looked it over in the draft and it looks like she does have quite the criteria for the position. So I think I'm very happy to see her come on board and it looks like she should be able to do a good job. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're excited about the experience that she has. She has quite a bit of experience. In, in a variety of experience as right, well. So right. that, that really um, piqued our interest in yeah. uh, one so I'm, I'm on board with it. Yeah. So if you want to vote, Joe. Well, I got so excited. We were just going to move <laughs> past <laughs> I guess we'll have to vote. We're too. excited that you're excited. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to make a motion, Bill? I'll make a motion that we um, appoint Amy E. Kramer. I would have you saying that. Mm -hmm. Yep. To the um, library trustee or whatever it is, library director, 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 position. director. Um, and I'll make a motion on that. All right, and I'd like to second. And any discussion? No, no further discussion. No. How do you vote, Bill? I vote yes. I vote in favor. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. While we're on our favorite subject of the library, we have an appointment request. <coughs> Appointment for Ann McCann Groveland uh, to fill the Board of Library Trustee vacancy effective February 23rd, 2015. The appointment is made as a joint appointment between the uh, Board of Selectmen and the Library's Board of Trustees until the next annual election, which is coming up in May. At that time, there will be an election to fill the remaining term of outgoing trustee Heidi Snyder. Uh, for those folks that uh, are not aware, but Heidi uh, recently um, uh, left the, uh, the trustees. Yes, she, she resigned, resigned. Yeah. Um, mo uh, mostly due to family, uh, not mostly, for family conflict, and sure. she wasn't able to attend evening meetings. She has young children, and her husband would be working meeting um, sure. in the evening. So you can't, you know, you can't keep up on all the business, and she felt very um, committed to the uh, to the um, the trustees and the and the library, but. You know, you can't, she didn't feel that she was going to be effective not being there. Well, I've attended a few meetings, so I know her service was valued and will be missed. It was. So and, big shoes and, to she, fill. and she won't be gone. She'll be back good. <laughs> another day. <laughs> good, good. So tell us a little bit about Ann. So Ann McCann has um, been an avid um, attendee at the uh, Library um, Board of Trustee meetings, so uh, we felt like she was. Uh, really uh, actively interested, uh, aware of what had been going on, you know, in the past, you know, the recent past, 
and um, would be an easy uh, person to fill Heidi's spot um, quickly. And um, she, we uh, contacted her and uh, she said yes, she would be. Um, and so we're very happy to put her name forward. Um, we also had uh, other people if, uh, interested. And uh, so that feels really good to have um, you know, community interest. So uh, again, that is um, very positive. Um, but we felt Ann was really on top of what was currently going on by having attended you know, several of, almost all of the last couple of months meeting. Well, I've spoken to Ann in the past. I know she's quite passionate about the library and I think she's, yeah. she's she's a great addition. She's currently a volunteer right now and she's um, helped in the last year's book sale. Um, Heidi will be working on the book sale <laughs> too, um, which is in April, April 25th weekend. Um, so, um, uh, the other thing, um, my understanding is that Ann is also um, is circulating nomination papers. So yes, if she accepts she this so appointment until the May election, she certainly could be a person that could run as right. well for the seat. So that, that also uh, speaks in her behalf of uh, being fully interested by um, also taking out the papers that are necessary and sure. not waiting till the last minute. Right. And she hasn't given you any indication that she wanted to accept appointment only temporarily. I believe she's going to run as well, as far as you know. Right, but it, I mean, it's th <coughs> that is the appointment until the election. Until the election, you have to right. go on the ballot. Right, right. very good. Well, I don't as have Jen and I do because our terms are up too. Right. <laughs> okay. The, uh, and Anne Marie. Yeah, and all, all three of us. All three of you. All three of us are up. This up, year. Up this year. Wow. Okay. Bill, what I'll are your make thoughts? a motion to appoint <laughs> Ian McCann. Here's another trustee. Uh, to fill the board of library trustee vacancy effective um, February 23rd, 2015. Um, and it will go to the election, I would say. Yeah. And I'd. Um, on May 2017. I accept the motion. And how, how do you vote, Bill? I vote in favor of. And I do too, so it's unanimous. Thank Congratulations and thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Yep, you. we did. We did. did <laughs> yeah, we started a little early. Job well done. Yay, <laughs> another trustee made it. <laughs> and I appreciate um, Kathy and uh, Carlos being here also. Thank you all for what you're doing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I'm going to wait about two minutes. Best of luck tomorrow. Until we start at 6 p.m. Give me a chance to. Okay. We're going to wait two minutes so we start at 6:20 sharp. Yes. When you have a public hearing, somebody may want to attend. So. Yes, because it was advertised in the newspaper yeah, for you a 6:20 public hearing. Okay. So, Joe, on the next page, you have. No, it's a slip. In the packet. Pass the resume and pass that email. One more. There's the instructions on the public hearing. Is this the notice? The notice is right here in the middle. Oh, got it. I would invite them down front if you have slides. I would invite them down front. Someone just became one. Okay, unless they're doing anything, then they can come. Do you guys want to sit up front? All right, I'm going to open up a public hearing. It's uh, 620, and I'm going to read the notice. Excuse me, Joe. We need a motion and a vote to open the public hearing, please. Can I have a motion, please, to open up the public I'll hearing? I'll make a motion to open up the public hearing related to 
the transfer of a liquor license mm -hmm. on one. No, it's not on the other. I guess one Washington. One Washington Street in yeah. Baldwin. And I'll uh, second that uh, motion. How do you vote, Bill? I vote in favor to have the hearing. Okay. And I vote same. It's unanimous. The hearing is open. You need to, um, what I'm going to do is read the notice. <clears throat> the Groveland Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Monday, February 23rd, 2015 at 6.20 p.m. at Town Hall. 183 Main Street, Groveland, Mass., on the application for transfer of a retail package goods store, all alcoholic beverages licensed from NC Liquors, Inc. to Groveland Markets and Liquor, Inc., 1 Washington Street, Groveland, Massachusetts. Charbel Maroon is the manager. Description of the premises, one and one-half block building, two entrances. So we have here Mr. Maroon and also... Uh, his attorney, Rachel Jun Junkins, I believe you'll, uh, Junkins, okay, you'll speak on behalf of your client regarding this uh, uh, public notice? Uh, yes, we filed an application for the transfer of a liquor license previously uh, granted by this board to uh, NC Liquors. Uh, Groban Market and Liquor Incorporated is looking to move into the NC Liquors building, uh, and I believe his full application is in order given all bank statements needed, uh, Corey checks, everything has been signed. Um, and we're just looking for the approval from the board for the transfer uh, so we can send it off to the ABCC. I believe everything is in order, so. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'll make a motion, and I'm going to read it out because we we have it written out. To uh, The motion is <clears throat> to approve the transfer of a retail package goods store, all alcoholic beverages license from NC Liquors, Inc. to Groveland Market and Liquor, Inc., 1 Washington Street, Groveland, Mass., Charbel Maroon, manager, subject to approval of Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission of Boston, Mass. Do I have a second on that motion? I'll second the motion as read. <coughs> Bill, do you have any comment? The only comment I would have, I don't even know if it's a good comment, but <coughs> is he going to maintain the same hours and all that kind of stuff? It's pretty much not changing. He doesn't have any plans at this time to change anything <coughs> okay. uh, from NC Liquors. He just intends to take the business as is and then, you know, right. see how things are going. And, of course, if he has to come back in front of any board to right. extend hours, he'll, he'll go ahead okay. and do so. Perfect. I think that was it. I don't have any questions. Okay. How do you vote, Bill? I vote in favor. And I support uh, the motion as well, so it's uh, unanimous. Thank you very much. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Two gentlemen sign this at the bottom. One left. Is there any fighting there? No, I was on my left. Okay. Guys just on top. top. On top? I'll yes. have you do it. <laughs> the other one running and eating. I want you to make sure you feel good. But I put on top anyway. <laughs> and then could one of you make a motion to close the public hearing? <coughs> I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. All right, now we have that. So you close it and I'll second that. 6.23 p.m. 6.23. Oh, <laughs> close it at 6.23. So you make the motion, Bill? Yep, I made the motion. All right, it's all set. Okay, that's done. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm good, how are you? So if we can just, we have a few quick minutes before um, the police yeah. come on. Um, if I can just ask you to, um, I have to step out to attend the finance board meeting, so there's a few items I'd just like to make sure. So you um, want to skip ahead a little bit? Yes, if there Go are ahead. any questions um, under the votes of the board. So the first three um, I would like you to look at. Um, I'd like a vote of the board to actually formally open the town meeting warrant uh, for the annual town meeting. Um, town meeting is Monday, April 27th. The annual town meeting will be at 7.30 p.m., and articles do to me um, by March 25th. That will give me time to have town council review them and have this board approve the warrant um, and enough time to disseminate it to the public. Uh, the second item would be um, to ask this board to approve a special town meeting to take place that same evening, Monday, April 27th, but at 7 p.m. Um, and if you could do that and open that warrant for articles um, due to me again by March 25th. 
Um, the third item would be um, the Highway Commissioner has requested an additional 70000 for deficit spending. Um, at your last meeting, you approved 70000 So this is an additional amount. This is an additional amount. Do we have that. a timeline as to when those funds will be spent? Any clue? Well, In other words, so that, that means we spent the 70000 already. Yes. So um, I'm not sure where we are in the, this new 70000 Um Hopefully it will carry us over a little, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. I, did um, see the most, sun, I did see the sun in the sky today. Yes. So there is um, hope. Most of the surrounding communities have already spent their snow and ice budget, yeah. uh, you know, twice as much. So we're right in there. We have a $165,000 budget. Yeah. This will appropriate an additional or allow for an additional 140000 well, tell us a little bit, just briefly related to this, um, some of the potential sources of reimbursement. I know this discussion from the governor's office that he may be pursuing some federal monies for local and state governments, but you have a separate track also that you're pursuing, at least exploring. Yes, so um, initially the only storm that we are right now allowed to seek reimbursement for is the uh, the first blizzard. First one, because it's a blizzard. Correct. Right. Um, and that was, so the way it works with reimbursement is the county has to have enough damages between expenditures and damages to qualify. Um, I actually received an email today from Merrimack Valley Planning that as of right now um, we are $200,000 short in this county from getting approval to get any reimbursement. For the whole county. So they have asked everyone to go back and look at their expenditures, make sure everything was properly reported, see if there were any other expenditures that could be submitted that haven't um, to try and reach that additional 200000 And it's safe to say that the snow removal from the roof would not qualify because it's not attributable to the first storm that is correct. specifically. That is correct. Um, so... Would a portion of it be used? No. So... Right now, so that would leave us to come up with 140000 because sure. there's no guarantee when and if we would get any reimbursement. Of course. Um, so there's a number of ways we can do that. Um, I am working with um, the assessor's office to look into having them release some overlay money, um, potentially for the snow and ice shortfall or just to help balance the next fiscal year budget. We could implement a spending freeze and only allow for mandatory expenditures to be paid out. Um, or we look at... Um, you know, budgets that haven't been fully spent, start figuring out where we have excess money, and that's what I've been doing. So I have a running list. If I know that a contract has come in um, less than what we've budgeted, I sort of put that money aside. So I have a running total. Um, obviously, 140000 in addition to the other items that were already short. It will be difficult to find, but I'm confident we can do that. Okay, great. I appreciate that very much. <coughs> Bill, did you have any questions or thoughts? Um, nope. Hope that those stops. All right. I'm going to take <laughs> those. Stop spending. That's right. Well, strangely enough, if we keep spending, we might actually get reimbursement. If we stop well. here, we get nothing. I'm not wishing anything, but well, it's a strange position to be in. Well, because it's only that first storm. Right. So these, any other storm that's happened has not. Right, uh, right now. And if it keeps happening, we're not going to get the money anyway. So if something comes through with the gover you know, the governor or federal reimbursement, then we could That's a separate certainly problem, request yeah. reimbursement, but right now it's only that first one. Okay. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. We're going to move forward with the votes. Um, so that all the three at once? No, we have to do them separately. So the first one, I'd, uh, you'd like to make a motion, Bill. I'll just read it as a motion. Open town meeting warrant for annual town meeting Monday, April 27, 2015 at 730 Articles due to the finance director by March 25th, 2015. So that's the motion in its entirety as written. I'll second it. Okay. Do you have uh, any other thoughts or questions mm. or comment? Okay. No discussion. I'll support the motion. How do you vote, Bill? I vote in favor of. And I do too, so it's unanimous. I'll move on to the next one. Approval. This is the motion as written. Approval for special town meeting to take place on Monday, April 27, 2015 at 7 p.m. Open warrant. Articles due to the finance director by March 25, 2015. Can I have a motion, please? I make a motion to accept it as read. And uh, I'll accept that motion. Any discussion, Bill? No. Nope. Okay. And I'm in favor. How do you vote for it? In favor. And I am too, so it's unanimous. And the last item... The Highway Commissioner's request dated 2-20-2015 for additional deficit spending of the 
FY15 snow and ice line item. The amount is $70,000. Do I have a motion on that? I'll make a motion as read. All right, Bill. Did you uh, uh, second that? Uh, second that. Do you have any uh, discussion or? No, just sure. stop snow. All right. How do you vote? <laughs> just stop snow. Can we put that in the motion? Sure. How do you, um, I'm how do you in vote favor on that? Of it. Okay, very good. And I'm in favor of that as well. So it's unanimous. So that takes care of three votes of the board. We want to take care of uh, that. We get the rule of necessity already, right? No. So that rule of necessity is for the March 23rd meeting, um, Bill, when you will be absent. Okay. Um, so that. If you two want to vote that, that will allow sure. Betty to I, vote I, on the payroll warrant. I, we'd be happy to do to do that. Let, let me read this out. We, we need to invoke a, uh, the rule of necessity on March 23rd uh, for Betty to vote on a payroll warrant, which she normally does not. Um, and uh, the reason for the rule of necessity to be invoked is that Bill is going to be away that evening. And so therefore, with only two of us, we have to vote the warrant. Similarly to what we did earlier tonight when Bill uh, had to vote on a warrant that uh, he has an interest in. So um, the motion reads as written, accept the rule of necessity for March 23rd, 2015 meeting to allow Selectman Gorski to sign the payroll wa warrant in Selectman Dunn's absence. Do I have a second? I second it. Okay. And I'm, I'm in favor of it. Okay. And I'll... Uh, Group, uh, excuse me, I um, accept that and uh, we'll also vote in favor of that. All in favor, so it's unanimous. <coughs> Motion by Bill. We're going to not, uh, we're, we're not going to approve any of the minutes and any of the um, um, minutes from any of the meetings, correct? Correct. That's, so we should hold off on that. Yes. Um, and then one other issue that you'd could certainly discuss or just think about mm -hmm. um, the upcoming meeting schedule. Two of your upcoming meetings, April 20th is Patriots Day, a holiday, and then May 4th is the town election. So I'm assuming you don't want to meet that night. Well, I don't um, think we can. Well, uh, uh, certainly the vacation, uh, the uh, holiday we can't. Right. So if you want to just start thinking about mm -hmm. other dates, if you want to just make it the Tuesday or, or how you want to work those two That'd be wrong. days. Say again? We can, we, you and I can say we want to move them to Tuesday and then pass it on to Betty and yep. then let Betty. Yeah, why don't we do so that? You want to so move it to the next Tuesday. evening. Yeah, that's so fine. then technically May 5th would be the first meeting of the five member board of selectmen. And that's when you would reorganize, would be that next that's night. That's when we would reorganize. Makes sense, of okay. course. And then April 21st, mm -hmm. Tuesday. <coughs> so we won't vote on that. We'll just make that as a consensus between the two of us and then subject to uh, further discussion and uh, That's fine. a vote when uh, the board is fully convened with Betty's presence. Sure. Okay. Right. And then yeah. the policies, um, we'll hold off on the policies as well then. We'll wait till uh, Betty can attend as well. Okay. There were two policies, just so the public knows, there are two policies that we're contemplating as a board policy on membership of board and commissions by the selectmen and policy on uh, attendance at public meetings by Board of Selectmen members. Basically, we're imposing, if you will, lack of a better word, some rules of conduct and rules of expectations when Board of Selectmen members participate in public meetings and also join boards. And uh, I, those are probably very favorable to Betty, and they certainly are to me and to you, Bill, but it would be a good idea for the three of us to come together again and formally vote them, so we'll, uh, we'll cancel doing that tonight. All right, it's uh, 6.34. Uh, <coughs> We're going to go back to the regular flow of our agenda this evening, and uh, we have the, uh, the privilege of meeting with uh, uh, Chief uh, Melowitz and uh, Deputy Gillen and Officer Fournier for a discussion of a proposed firing range on Center Street. So who would like to open that up? Want us to move up on it? Sure, please do. Hi, Denise. Hi, how are you? How you doing? How are you? Bill, Bill. Uh, in case you guys, I know you know Officer Fournier, but Bill, if you don't, um, Ed Fournier is our firearms instructor. He's got more training and certificates than we have time to discuss tonight. So he's very well versed in firearms and the training and, and the whole nine yards. 
And a couple years ago, I commissioned Officer Fournier to oversee the inception of a, a firing range that we're proposing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that firing range was, you know, slated for the property off of Center Street, which is Strawberry Fields. And mm -hmm. uh, Officer Fournier had actually got underway, uh, starting to develop the range with the Highway Commissioner and the Light Department helping them out. And then there was a hold put on everything with the, the purchase of the land. And now that the land has you know, been purchased and it's finalized, and we're back to, to discuss it. Uh, we've already met with Denise and uh, Officer Forney, who have, have ex uh, explained to her our proposal and how it will proceed. So I'll turn it over to you, Ed, and go from there. Um, as we discussed in when we originally started this proposal, that the incoming and accepting were closed to a convenience um, to town house law by the U.S. Supreme Court decision. We have a liability on how we plan it. The police department has never been sued for failure to qualify with the police for failure to train. Right now, we don't have any training facilities. The, the uh, private gun clubs don't want the police department in there. Um, and a lot of the police ranges throughout the Commonwealth are uh, closing down. Um, we do we. There are some alternatives, like going to Fort Devens, however, at a, at a huge expenditure. Uh, not only the officer's time going out there as far as payroll, but um, they're $300 a day up to only 13 guys, so which means now you have to do another day at $300 a day, and if you're there past 3 o'clock, <coughs> it's time and a half the rate. U.S. Supreme Court decisions state that we have to train realistically, which means 60% of our officers work in the dark. We have to do low-light scenarios, something the town of Groveland hasn't been able to do because we have not had a place to do it. Recent U.S. Supreme Court decisions state that finances or inability to train in that is not an exemption, okay? So which means we're stuck in a pickle. We've been fighting over the last maybe two to three years of just a place to shoot, okay? One year we went well over our year because we had no place to shoot whatsoever. We couldn't have a rod and gun club. Um, we, we were lucky enough to hook up with Merrimack. Merrimack let us use our range, okay? When we purchased the land behind Str Strawberry Fields, that's the perfect opportunity to turn around and maybe put something out there right behind the highway department. I've been out there, surveyed it. We actually used it once for a training area when busing owned it and gave us permission. And out of the three days, there was only five phone calls throughout the entire town on the noise. And most of those were all in favor, hey, are you doing police training, okay? The proposed area would only take us 30 yards by 75 yards. Now since it's been back on and over the, the late summer and this winter, I've visited 35 police ranges that have the same makeup as our town. One, how to make it safe, two, the ideas and how to make it easily accessible, and three, to get how, how are they maintaining their ranges, okay? And we can come up with a win-win solution to this. We can take the, ease the liability on the town we get our officers better trained and get them to qualify and raise the scores up and actually give them training because it's right here in town. It's an investment. Not only that, too, on a side note, I'm qualified to actually teach some of these classes, which means on two occasions, twice a year, we can bring the new recruits in that gone through the Reserve and Intermittent Academy and actually bring money into the town by um, holding the class, they pay the money to the town, and we're able, because before they can work, they have to have this class, and twice a year we can qualify the retirees, which again will bring money back into the town as the firearm safety <coughs> course does right now. And I wanna say that this firearm safety course has brought us thousands of dollars in since we've been doing it, um, and that that's another way to help offset it. Now, with the design that I'm going to be proposing, a lot of it is going to be made, can be built with just 
raw materials that are already there, the dirt that's already there with the light department putting up some poles to hold erosion. And the new design that I learned about as I visited these ranges, instead of having, a, I was gonna have a fence 30 yards by 75 yards by 30 yards, all they have to do is have a fence 30 yards because all, all of it is gonna be enclosed with um, natural dirt barrier. It's the safest way to do it. It's covered on three sides and at the very end would be a gate. The proposed area will be just outside the highway department. In they the have back, a back gate the there. Back, yeah. It'll be, be but right up against their property. I've been in touch with Mike Cloutier and um, the highway commissioner and stuff and we're gonna start get putting together numbers on what, what it would take for them to actually put this together. I've actually made a, a couple of copies um, for you to read at your leisure and I highlighted them on um, the importance that this rain fence is going to be. Um, so what we have here again is an unfunded mandate basically. You're having cases being heard at the Supreme Court right. that are being and these are, these, and these are cases that have been heard years and years ago. These right. are new cases. These are the guidelines that we were supposed to be going under right along. Under the direction of the chief and deputy chief, so far administratively, collectively, we've been able to do the get, we, we're inspecting the weapons twice a year. We have, bet, we have record keeping on, on um, you know, on the on the weapons, because the first thing, even if it's a good shoot, first thing they're gonna go after is the records. Then they're gonna go after the officer's training. The second, which came to light in recent shootings, is they've gone after, did these officers um, have training in this type of environment? Are they training at, what, at night? So we're gonna have the ability to do that. Um, and we're gonna have the ability to, I just got done helping s set up, we have Glock in here for three days to do a Glock armors class at no cost to the town, but by us hosting it, we get to send three officers over the next three days to that class for free. We'll, we'll still be able to do that with the range. And what I'm proposing is, is that the range is probably gonna be used on an average of once a month, okay? Um, definitely not on Sundays. And why I say averages is because one month you may use it twice, another, it may go three months without being used, okay? But we do need it. We have recruit off, when we hire new reserves, the first thing we do is we're calling around. Where do we shoot? Where do we qualify them? Yeah. Here we can go right in our backyard and qualify them not have to be at anybody's back, you know, back and call or, um, you know, fight to get the, get them qualified. Um, and it's, it's really becoming a necessity at this point. I got a, I got a couple questions for you before you go farther on. Um, number one, the security of it, would, would that be, would they be going through the highway garage or have their own entrance to get in? Well, <clears throat> two, the, you could go by, They'd be able, we would have access through the gate that's back there. But that road, if you come in the gate for Strawberry Fields, yeah. when we did that training out there, you could get cars back there so you could actually. Okay, <coughs> so you're thinking, of, you're thinking of coming through Strawberry Fields and going over the highway department and, and parking out there? If that's the one only, of the options. And I'm, listen, I'm all for this 100%, and the only, only thing I'm thinking is, if when you design it, if we somehow can go through the highway, because we should probably talk to the commissioner first, I'll have some kind of an entrance. Because if you're out there with, you know, with the crew out there and people come in and they see you, they may follow you out there. This way here, it's more secure. They don't, they don't see what's going on. You're kind of going in the, the gate, going out back and doing your own thing. Yep. If you're coming in and out Strawberry Fields, it may be where someone says, oh, what's going on? Curiosity, and they go out there. So that's, you know, when you I put mean, it together, that may not be a bad idea. The, also be a matter of doing is if, if we can is just changing some of the fence to a gate. Exactly, right, right. Where, so where you could drive I'm a vehicle I'm just trying to make it more private 
Because I've but, been out at my, I know when you guys are out there because I can hear the, what's going on. And a lot of the people say, what's going on? You know, and you don't want someone to walk out there and yep. you're out there doing your thing. And they're like, oh, standing there watching. So, yeah. so if you don't know, they don't know what's going on. We're better off. Our vehicles will be safer there too because yeah, we'll leave exactly. them. We can't see right, them. Right. So, I mean, so I like I'm thinking that idea. if we can maybe talk with the commissioner, like you said, maybe run a fence down the side of his fence. So you're not going in his place, but yet you have your little access out to where you guys are. On three side on three sides, and nobody will ever have access to right. it anyway. Right. It'll just be on that one side. Right. But there is a way we'd be able to turn around and and um, put. Um, I forget what you would call the area, but just on the opposite side of where they have the, uh, the, 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 um, the, bins. the stone. The bins, yeah, the, the stone bins, bins yeah. and all that stuff. We'd be able to put a gate up in there. Right, There's okay. already a walk-in gate, but we'd want at least one gate where you could drive right. a vehicle through right, right. to be able so to get around. You, you stated that the, the class, um, when you held this, you would be getting some revenue out of it. Do you think the revenue would help maintain the cost of keeping that up and what have you, or is not enough money there to do that? Once it's built, it's yeah. going to be low maintenance right, right, anyway. Right, right. But yes, um, there is there a budget for building it yet? Do you have the money set aside to build it? No, we're, we're, I'm waiting for prices on, on the, the from the uh, uh, yeah. Mike Crudia oh. and Bob, because w we I originally had a design for it, but after I saw a couple of the ranges, I actually changed that right. design to make but do it have, safer. Does the police department have any money set aside for this yet? No. no. Do, you, do you know where you're going to be able to find it? Do you think you can find it? We're hoping our finance director will help us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I won't get into that. Yeah. Yeah, um, and I just have to say, so you can't just take the revenue from something and use it. it no, has I to understand. Be, so, I so it would have to go to town meeting and right. they'd have to set so up that's an what account. I'm getting at. Maybe we have to put an article in town meeting right. to appropriate this to get this done. You, I, and I, I'm a, I, I took your course, and it was a great course that you ran, and I never bought a gun. But, I mean, it, I have the license. I, it was a really good course. It was educational. My daughter's dying to take it again. And I think it's a good thing. I really do. I think it's a good thing. And... Um, I'm 100% for it. I think it would be, you're, you're, like you said, the men coming in on the force are going to have the training, they're going to be able to everything, and you do a good job, it's a win-win. Right. It really is. And, and it, I, th I think it's an investment because, right. one, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a lot of potential liability off the plate. Right. And, two, we're going to have better control over yep. how it's used. Right. And it's going to make it more versatile. Right. Um, you know, there's other eight, you know, um, I hate the, you know, like the fire department trains every week. We right. need, we, that's you need what we need to you do. need it. Right. Yep. And um, you were saying, you were saying in your conversation, it might be used in a month, but it's obviously not going to be used in the winter months, so you're not going to be out there in the winter. So it's going to be a seasonal thing. So we're, so we're talking seasonal more than something right. that the people watching us on TV right now are going to say, oh, wow, this is going to be all the time. It's more no. seasonal. And, and it's not. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to be able to limit it. And like we said, on an average, it may be right. once a month. Right. You know, with months, we might be out there once a month but for a couple of days, but it may not be used for a couple of months. And if you're down in the ground, if you core the ground out and you're down in the ground, the noise is going to be less because the, obviously the higher up, the more it's going to travel. The lower you're in, the less you're going to hear it. <coughs> That's what I, I, I thought about the three, the three berm design because it's gonna, it has to go up opposed to out to the side, leaving right. that one side plus as the berms are up there natural vegetation right. is going to absorb that exactly you mentioned something else bill about hearing the gunshots out there in the past that's where we exclusively shot 25 20 25 years ago right and um the sand pits was the area and i, th I think we stopped if i remember right maybe the chief can remind me um i think it's because they took down a lot of the piles of sand right but you look yeah. back how we used to do it i call it in the old days it right. was just Shooting into big sand piles and um, it's so more it's safe if you're down in the ground. Like well, you're talking about what else? What he is talking about? Yeah, it would be know? safe. Yeah, we used to go out and we would find a, a big hill that was safe and yep. we would shoot against it. Right. And of course, the gravel started dwindling down and then there was no place to right. shoot. Right. And every time we were out there, of course, you always get phone calls. What's going on? <coughs> but once the people know it's the police training, yeah, everyone's fine. Right. Right. You know, and it's normally in the afternoon. It's not nine o'clock or ten. Oh yeah, right. Uh, you had mentioned Mike Cloutier. He is in charge of the electric de department, so you need some lighting down there. You also mentioned the highway commissioner. What do you need from the highway commissioner? Well, the, because the design of this range, 90% of it is him using the backhoe and building berms for the dirt. And Mike Cloutier comes into play where if we are going to put lighting down there at some point, lighting, but 
um, use, because he told us you can get telephone poles for free of charge from it. And it's going to be used to help stop erosion of the, the berms and help stabilize the, uh, the berms. Now, the town's going to have to buy insurance if we're going to do our own training, correct? There's going to be some liabilities. I mean, somebody gets hurt or, God forbid, even worse. Well, we would have to make sure the insurance company knew we had our range, you right. know, and stuff or, on or site. Or add it as an endorsement. Mm -hmm. That's important because we're going to get into the business of training our own people. And this training, un unlike the fire department, and God love them, they, they train, and they train a lot. But some of their training is voluntary. This is all mandatory training. This is required to keep right. your badge. Now, what a right. lot of it is yeah. stuff that we do already. We right. just don't have a place to do it. Right. Um, that's, that's the problem we're running into. And what's the problem? The type of training that is now being required is called live there's, it's always been required. It's been required no. over <coughs> 10 years ago. Right. We just haven't had the ability to do it because the places that we were using won't allow us to, and the U.S. Supreme Court says that's not an excuse. Right. We have to do it. We have to train low light. We have to train decision shooting, which we started doing this year. Um, so that's a very, a decision shooting without getting into right. technical, that's very active. That's not something you can do at a regular range and just stand in right. and shoot. Now, and the ranges are not allowing you folks to go down there and do low light. Low light. And, and, and active, shoot, active. Shooting on the move. move shooting while moving, right. We're, we're, we're There's actually, the problem. Right, and we're actually supposed to be training where <clears throat> you pull a cruiser in and an officer actually gets out of the cruiser, goes to a barricade, things like that. We don't have any, we don't have that uh, ability. Um, so th that'll open up that door also. There is a, uh, a committee that's convening um, regarding um, acting as an advisory committee to the Board of Selectmen for all of the land purchases that we made uh, recently. Um, I, I'm not speaking on behalf of the Board, just my opinion. I, I would think that this particular initiative should be on a separate track. And you should make your appeal and petition to the town directly in the form of an article public hearings, and so forth and so on. And of course, any building that's going on there, I believe that's gonna be requiring some permitting as well. So uh, that that's just my opinion. Any because building? if we... Uh, no building. Uh, oh, you're gonna put up something, structures, right? Well, the only Holes. thing that we were talking about was is a... Um, like a shed or something? A, a shelter, yeah. more like a... A roof, so uh, like they have in Georgetown, like part of the gun club over there. They have the shelters the guys stand underneath, and they have some of them have plastic in front of them, and they have way out there they have a thing they shoot in, but you'd have the dirt. This would be more so yeah. like the officers, what when they're <laughs> not on the line, they right. can go back, right. reload, take a break, yep. and they're out of the, the sun <clears throat> for the rain. Right. Right. And uh, the reason I, I say that, and again, this is strictly my opinion, is that if we fold this request and initiative into the larger project of what we're gonna do with all three properties, recreation or open space and so forth, and then it fails, we're still stuck with a significant liability. We can't train our officers. Because of the new unfunded mandates, what's really going on here is you can no longer use the facilities you've been using to be able to train, and we're gonna find ourselves with the clock ticking and deadlines being missed and officers not properly trained. Now, if you have a situation where a gun is discharged, even if it was done for the most legitimate reasons, the most defensive reasons, without that training, could create massive liabilities for the town. Correct? Correct. What, e, you could have a justified shooting on camera. The first thing they're gonna look at is- Training records. The, the maintenance records of the gun. When was the last time it was looked at? They're gonna look at, let's say it's low light after dark, 60% of the, how much low lighting shooting has that officer had? How much decision-making shooting has that officer had in training? Um, and it just goes right down. And what they're gonna do is, instead of a town maybe settling for an X amount, now they're looking into the millions because the officer didn't have, they'll bring up all kinds of doubt. They'll, and there's only three states in this country where if a DA justifies anybody using use of force, you can't be sued, and unfortunately, we're not one of them. You the, know, the, the, the civil liability is still there. 
I would guess that there would be some people that are fiscally conservative and would find it somewhat attractive to have this facility opened to other police departments for the purpose of selling the facility for revenue purposes. There's no such proposal, no such aspect of that in your proposal, correct? This is really for our own. Our. That's it. Yeah. But you said you'll have some outside people coming in for what? What we do is thing? let's, um, a lot of the really good training, like it would cost us thousands of dollars to send an officer to between ammo, time, right. and the class. Just like Glock, what we're doing in the next three days. Glock is coming in. Glock is a gun manufacturer. A gun manufacturer, and they're going to train people how to repair and fix the guns. Right. Since we're hosting it, <coughs> we get to send free officers for free. That's great. Uh, same with the range. We could have we can have a com um, instructor come in for three, you know, a couple of days active shoot or whatever, and that will allow our officers to send a couple of officers, because they usually, they, they'll tell you it's one or two seats depending on how many. Now that officer gets to sit, no charge to the town. You know, which would normally cost, <coughs> a lot of these live fire trainings that are put on, you're talking eight, nine hundred dollars per officer. Mm -hmm. We can send two officers for free. Just for us hosting it. Hosting it. <coughs> Very good. I believe, I could be wrong, maybe you guys can help me. I believe that land is highway department land. It's not strawberry fields, is it? It's mm, part of the No, not outside part of the highway. Not outside not on the other side of the fence. That's that's what we bought. We bought that property. Because that's why the project was sort of in limbo. Yeah, that was the outer for the, the outer perimeter land. of the sand pits on the um, So on the south. It's town owned side. land. Now it is, yes. So we can go ahead and do what we gotta do with it, because it's town owned land. Yep. Right? My suggestion would be to have the police, the light, and the road commission all get together and have another meeting with all of us in a meeting. Because if you're going to keep piecemeal and talking to him, talking to him, talking to him, sometimes it's better to put everybody in one room, sit down, talk about it, and we can get it done. Um, I know we had an all boards meeting a few weeks ago, and it was a really good meeting because everyone got in, they got talking, and we can. It's up to you guys. I mean, it's just a suggestion. I can. Yep. Then maybe like spring, you're ready to roll this out to the town meeting if we need to. Do you think the dollar the dollar amount will be that high the to build this? To, to have no. to go to town meeting? No. Because Bob might be able to help or something. Yeah. I mean, if it's not a lot of hours and it comes down to volunteers, well, you know, what you're looking at nice is thing. the dirt's already there. Right. You got to cut a hole. It's just moving it. Cut it right. And he's going to use the poles. Right. To reassure it up. Right. That's on three sides. The only thing that we got to do is the most expensive part, which I already which initially was $6,000, but that was for fencing around three sides. Right. Now, with the newer design, it's 30 yards of fencing, that's it. Right. Which, right. Uh, which So it's going to be minimal. Which I was yeah. hoping to get as one of those uh, fences where you could pull vehicles in, not right. just, not just gate. the gate. Right. And as far as the overhang, you could probably reach out to Whittier and see if they could build something for the, <coughs> the overhang. Right. Well, again, it's just my opinion. I, if I do believe you should be on a separate track. We want to do also, we want to be very mindful, respectful, respectful and sensitive to the fact that there is a committee that's convening. You know, there's a lot of talk around town about, you know, the purchase of the land and, you know, who, who wanted it, who didn't want it. You know, We've got 4,000 voters in this town, and only eight, 900 come out <laughs> on a, maybe on a, a 1,200 or so on a presidential year. But at the end of the day, the purchase of the property last year was done on a huge mandate, on a pretty significant mandate. And so now this particular committee coming through uh, to study the use of the property, um, it's important. It's important to the town, the people that voted for that property. But with that said, even if this technically does not qualify for a warrant, I would still like to, you know, remain in the spirit of transparency and disclosure that we have something that appears to be a public hearing so that, you know, even though it doesn't, may not qualify as a warrant article, we don't want to do it in the, in, in the dark and keeping people out of it because you know what the reaction will be. 
people get more upset that they weren't told, not that something actually did happen. And so the not being told will be an excuse to attack, you know, the process and the people involved in the process. So I, I'll be very, very specific then. I would like to see a public hearing at some point, you know, so that this can all be very transparent, even if we, especially if we don't, if the uh, item does not qualify to end up on a warrant. You said what especially, was the I'm sorry, especially with the abutters of, of people who live in the area. What's so. What was this, the size of uh, the area? 30 yards. So 30 yards, three times. 30 by 75. So 30. 90 feet, roughly, 90 by, did I get a By 75 yards. 75, so uh, 200 and 220. So it's, it's a small, it's a small, very small portion of land. Right. And <coughs> just outside, the, the understood. But right. But still. What I'm saying, I don't want to make the people watching TV think they're taking up acreage because they're not. They're taking right. up feet. But you, you brought up a good point. We wouldn't want access to this facility to be, let's say, at the, the right. traditional strawberry fields because no, if, right. if we end up using that area for fields and open no, space, we I don't agree. want the police department to be going through no, there to go to their facility. And I think so the, the facility access through the highway department is a great idea. Right. Right. And I think they're on. I think they're they're on board Sim with that. Simple solution. We can, and we can make you know. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, is I don't want people to un think that this is Strawberry Fields and that you guys are going to take up a big piece of land. This is the highway department. It's stuck over here in the back corner. It's not going to have anything to do with this, other than you guys may cross the land. Now, if we can get you over here, you're in there. You're private. You're out of the way. Give you some vehicle access to get in there. Some. I'm sure we could figure. And that, that fence out. is already in place, so right. we're utilizing it. It's going to be protecting on. Right. Each side, right. so that kind of helps with the cost. Right. And I agree with y'all saying, Joe, you don't want to not let the, the abutters know, and which I mean, we're on TV now saying it, and I'm sure we can tell the abutters, and they can come in, and we can once we get once we know what we have, what, what we're going to build, and what it's going to look like. Now we can get the abutters to come in and talk to them, and and uh, let them know. Yeah, and I and I probably would suggest doing that as well, doing some door to door in that area, just like anyone else that would want to build. You know, significant project. It's a little bit. What to put notices out, right? Yeah, notices. I mean, we we just want to do it properly. I, I think we're going to get support for this. I'm I'm not concerned, but let's go through, let's work together to go through a process. We want to help you go through the process to make it as transparent as possible. I don't so think anyone in the town that's that anyone in the town taxpayers knowing that you guys are here to make the town safe are going to fight it. I, I can't believe that. I mean, well, it's only to make better offices. It's going to make the town better. And yeah. save the town money, so it's a it's a win win everywhere we go. As long as we, like Joe says, as long as we include them in it, yep. I think we're good. So what's the alternative? Whether it's us or other <coughs> police departments, if you don't have a facility, what what, what actually happens? You you end up um, not well, training people. Or? With the with the new MPTC guidelines, we're supposed to be training, qualifying, and training twice a year. Twice a year. Twice a year at a minimum. Great. Um, so. What I did was, is I came up with a, a cost of, if we, let's say we had to use Fort Devens, okay? okay. Um, our budget for that one day, just one day, is going to go up $5,179. You have to do that twice a year minimum. Well, that's what they like, but sure. I, I just based it on that one, that one day we do qualifications. Right now, we split it up four and four. Four, uh, a group goes four, another group goes four. Down. Now now we're talking, it's eight hour days. Well, and uh, and that's 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 where your, your budget's gonna go. Right. It's a win-win. It's right. saving the town money and everything. Right, and, and but even, even going to the alternative of Fort Devens doesn't allow us to shoot low light because that's gonna that's going to be at time and a half to do low light because anything after three o'clock their their rate goes up. It's three hundred dollars a day from sub, from eight a.m. till three p.m. After that, it it goes through the roof, and then now you're talking eight to ten thousand dollars. Unreal. Yeah. Uh, because they have to stay there later sure. uh, to do the low light. So I think having it again in the town is just going to be a win-win all the way around. Sure. Bill, did you have any other questions or comments? No, nope, I think we're good. 
I, like I said, I think Thank you for your support. Yeah. We'll move it forward, we'll try to get a meeting with everyone and see if we can't reconvene with another meeting. <coughs> I'm trying to find, uh, I'm not good at drawing, so I'm trying to find a way to be able to draw it out, draw it out and sh show what. Go to see, see Bob on that, because he uses a lot of people for the drawings for different projects around town. Does he? Yeah. Yep. Well, Merrimack Valley do that? Merrimack Planning over there in I'm Haverhill? Sure. I think you can try the Merrimack Planning over in Haverhill. It's, a, it's the towns use it, and sometimes they have people in there that will do, will, will you bring something in, they'll, they'll help you do that. Yeah, so Merrimack Planning. So we could know where they are. plan it out and sh actually yeah. people could see what it yeah. what it'll look like. Yeah, if you're able to come back on the 23rd of March, a month from now, for the, for the plan and Planning. drawing and and, and possibly, you know, if you if you think you'd be ready, you can reach out to Denise um, to get on the agenda, along with, as Bill said, with the highway department, with the commissioner, and possibly with the winter should be done by then, hopefully. Yeah, March twenty third, right? And then Mr. Cloutier from the electric department, and we'll just have a kind of a mini all boards, uh, all commissions, all committee meeting I won't about be here it. So. Like I said, so yeah. I'm going to be on vacation. Okay, but that's fine. You know. But that's all right with that's me. That's fine with me. I just like to see it go forward. It's just a suggestion. Of give us a month and mm. come back in a month and see if we can look at a written plan with design and actual costs because the, the costs will come in. Uh, and uh, and then it will, uh, you know, if you can do it that day, we'll, we'll invite the, uh, the commissioner, the highway commissioner, and the electric department head to also come in and we can have a, a discussion. Absolutely. And, and, and keep moving with it. There's no one. Um, do you know if there's any money they can use in capital improvements or any of that kind of money? <coughs> it's a good question. I don't know. I know CPA I mean, couldn't do. Yeah, I think those do um, preservation money, but yeah. I, I think it's you would have had to put it in. Capital's going to be ten thousand and up. Yeah, there. you're not going to be there. Yeah, this was going to be very minimal. Yeah, I think we can probably. Like I said, if you're looking, if it comes down, you need volunteers. Yeah. Well, the, the and well, I, I mean, I don't mind. The I, I next three in. The the biggest expense is going to be the fence. Yep. And the hot top, but you're talking yeah. 30 yards by 75 yards. It's not, hot it's not a lot, right. not a big area, right? You know. And Bobby gets um, he gets a good rate um, through his vendor that he uses for hot topping. So when he does his hot topping in the town, maybe we can piggyback that with his hot topping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's why he'll he'll help you. I mean, he's very yards, knowledgeable that way. Extend the few yards that are purchased and mm -hmm. hot topping to do your project at the same time. Yeah, I'm so. sure that's why I want to get everyone together because I think yeah. it will all fall into place quicker. So yeah. Well, it's yeah. a great idea. So if we can do that by March 23rd, that would be great. Um, we'll look at the cost. We'll look at the plan. We'll look at the design. We'll have a discussion who does what. And then after that, we can set up some type of a, a public hearing. And then we'll maybe be able to uh, move move from there and get it, <coughs> get it going by the summer. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, if it's possible. Also, as we build the budget, you know, we want to know you know, before July 1st, what do you have to allocate and from where? So we, we, we have to see you in March and April. And, uh, you know, because as we, uh, we're going to find out uh, soon. <laughs> I think, I don't know the date for sure, but sometime in March, we're going to start getting indication from the state as to, you know, what kind of local aid we're going to have. And we're going to, you know, the next two, three, four weeks, we're going to start building our own budget. So if there's money that needs to be allocated for this project, Now's the good time to do it. You don't want to come in here in June and July. You want to come in in March, right? And then April, and get it done by, by the spring, so that July first, money's available. We build. So it's just a thought. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Very much. Well Thank done. You. Thank you for your support. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. To it. Yep. Well, well done. done. All right, Bill. The next item for discussion. Uh, we've actually already had that. That was the um, the April twenty first. It's Patri uh, April 20th is Patriot's Day, so we're going to have our Board of Selectmen meeting the following day. We'll check with Betty on that. When we can all convene, we'll, uh, we'll actually vote on that. And then May 4th is the town election, and uh, the consensus of the two of us is to uh, confer with Betty at the next meeting, and we'll vote to uh, see if we can, instead of meeting on May 4th, we'll meet on May 5th so that we can reorganize the new uh, Board of Selectmen. Okay, the next item on the agenda is selectman's time. This is a time to be used to make statements, propose future agenda items, or congratulate residents' teams on accomplishments 
This time should not be used to initiate a discussion. So do you have anything to add for our time, selective time, selection time? No, not really, because things are kind of moving along. Okay. I have three items. Uh, tomorrow night there's going to be a meeting of the, the school committee, and um, I'm going to attend it um, for a couple of reasons. I'm interested in understanding what plans the school will have for making up for the snow dates. I know that there's discussions regarding possible use of a couple of Saturdays. There's discussion about possible uh, extending the school date by one hour. And uh, certainly a discussion item could probably be extending the school year till I'm going to guess around June 25. We can go all the way to Ju uh, June 28. I do know that the State Department of Education is strongly recommending that all districts make plans for making up for the days because it doesn't seem like they're going to provide a waiver or an exception to end up with less than 180 days, I believe. So that should be an important discussion, and if I have an opportunity at public meeting, I'll make uh, some comments on that. The other reason why the school committee meeting is important to our town tomorrow is that tomorrow night, the appointment of uh, Jay Moran uh, to the Whittier uh, School Committee will come up as an agenda item. Jane has requested to uh, stay on the Whittier School Committee board. That is something mm -hmm. I certainly will support. If I have the opportunity to do that at public meeting tomorrow night, I'll, I'll do that as well. And I support it as well because I think she's good and I think yeah. she's definitely going to help be a good representative for us. Yeah, we make, as a town, we make a big commitment to Whittier uh, financially. We have a lot of our bright children go there. So I do believe that the town should have its own voice yep. uh, at the, on that school committee. The, the second meeting that's important uh, this week is the Regional Finance Committee. Uh, by the way, the school committee meeting is, I believe, at 6 o'clock, and um, it is at the high school uh, cafeteria. Uh, the second meeting, which I'm going to attend this week, is a meeting that I'm a member of, and that's the Regional Finance Committee. That's coming up on Thursday. The Regional Finance Committee is composed of one board of selectmen member from each town, the finance directors from each town, and also the superintendent and the business manager. And basically, the central theme of discussions is the financing of the schools. And one of the agenda items that will come up that evening will be proposals for snow removals of the roof and also the recent snow removal from the flat roofs, the cost impact, and um, uh, other related items as to whether or not we can you know, figure out how to uh, prevent some of the problems that I had uh, expressed as a concern uh, and others have as well in our town uh, and throughout the district uh, recently. So that's an important meeting. Both of those are open meetings. The public are invited to attend. The uh, Regional Finance Committee meeting is going to be in the superintendent's office. Um, unless we have a crowd, we'll have to go somewhere else, and that's uh, kicking off, I believe, at 6 o'clock. You can check with the Secretary of Administration, the uh, School Administration, Marianne Natha, to uh, uh, confirm that uh, time. The last meeting that uh, we should all be aware of is uh, about a month ago we had an all-boards meeting. And the second all-boards meeting or a continuation of that meeting is coming up this Saturday at um, 9 o'clock? Yes. So that is also an open meeting for anyone to attend. Strongly recommended. The central uh, issue is how we can improve our permitting process. Uh, we had an excellent meeting a month ago. And uh, people have actually done some homework. We've had uh, members from the zoning board, members from the planning board, the board of selectmen, all three of us were there. Um, also the assessors, um, uh, water department was there, and um, who else? We had uh, Mr. O'Hanley from the health, fire department. Health department. Health department. So uh, an all boards meeting is something that uh, has been a tradition here in Groveland. Um, and uh, so this meeting, on Saturday at 9 o'clock is really important because people actually from those boards and commissions have done some homework. We're going to be bringing them in. We're rolling up our sleeves, and we're going to continue a really amazing process of uh, looking at how we can improve our permitting uh, processes. And, and, and one of the reasons we're trying to do this is to make it more people-friendly. Yeah, and, and absolutely. We're trying to make it more people-friendly and not make it so... Um, I shouldn't say a headache, but like I said, people friendly, I guess. I mean, make it more smooth. 
right. Uh, and I think that I think we're on the right track. I, I know a lot. It's been tried before and it hasn't gone well, but I think we have some things in place right now. Uh, I know that someone picked up some literature from the Paramac planning. It's a booklet. It's all about permitting. I've submitted that around to the different committees. Um, it was actually sent in from the chairman of the zoning board, and I, he's looked it over, and some other departments <coughs> have having a chance to look that take that pamphlet over. So hopefully we all can take that pamphlet and we can really build on it. Good. Very good. All right. Did you have to? Uh, would you like to add anything else? Um, not really. The snow removal. Um, you know, it bothers me, but it is what it is. Um, the schools, the snow fell in the in the, in the thirty day timeline. It fell quickly. It's going to cost us some money to clean it up. Uh, but are you getting any <coughs> estimates at all? Any uh, idea? On the schools? Yeah. For either for uh, our town or the district. I mean, I haven't heard anything on the district, and I haven't heard anything on our town. But well, maybe we'll find out uh, at the regional I finance would committee on yeah, Thursday. Yeah, we'll find out. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's all cleaned up, and I think the schools are ready to, you know, obviously reopen and what have you. So they probably open today. I imagine. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear for things that smoother than that, but. No news is good news. <laughs> that's true. Okay. So that's it, pretty much. All right. So um, uh, we're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna ask for a motion to close the regular meeting. The uh, board of selectmen uh, will go into an executive session at approximately 7:40 this evening, pursuant to MGL 30A 21A1. Uh, and I'll, 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 I'll read that out in detail in a few minutes, but uh, what I'd like to do is ask for a, um, well, let me read that first. The pursuant to MGL uh, C30A 21A1, the board will vote to enter executive session to discuss the discipline or dismissal of or complaints or charges brought against a public official. Pursuant to the law, the building inspector has the right to have this meeting to be held in open session if he so chooses. So. Do I have a, um, when we go into executive session, we will not return to our regular meeting. So do I have a motion to adjourn the regular I'll meeting? I'll make a motion to adjourn to the executive session. Um, Exe you want to adjourn the, re the, adjour the adjournment of the regular meeting? Adjournment, yes, of the regular meeting into executive session. Okay. Now, roll call for executive session. Done. Mr. Moore, yes. Done, yes. Okay, so we're going to adjourn the uh, regular meeting and uh, not return to that meeting. And it is- We have uh, to close the meeting out yeah, as well, right? Exactly. Seven so I'm gonna need to make a motion to close our meeting. Yeah, go ahead. I'll make a motion to close the regular meeting and not re adjourn to this meeting. Okay, and I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Not much of a crowd tonight.